Good evening, friends. Um, I am going to get started in just a couple of minutes. I'm glad you all are here. If you are joining in for the replay, welcome, welcome. This is a week one of the first of 12 weeks where we're going to be um, diving into AI. And I'm really looking forward to this, um, to chatting with you all. So super excited. So we're going to get started in a couple of minutes. Get my screen set up and get ready for y'all. Because we have some questions I want to get into. And I'm going to do some demos. So I am excited. I am using a new software, so hopefully you guys will bear with me for a little bit. And if you can hear me, please drop a, um, a comment in the chat and just say yes or hello so that I know that you guys can hear me. And we're going to be getting started momentarily. Hey, Sharika. How are you? Thank you for joining in. We're going to be getting started in one second. So I think that I'm sharing my screen, but I don't really know. This setup is confusing. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to move this down here. Okay. Okay, so I am doing well, Sharika. Um, I'm glad that you're doing well, too. And thank you for joining me. So I know that you were interested in the... Um, wait, am I not showing my face? I don't think I am. Y'all, I'm sorry. I've been showing... <laughs> I'm showing my lap, Lord. Okay, we are gonna get this together. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I'm showing my face now. Am I? Hey, Sean, how are you? Let me get this together. Why? You guys aren't seeing my face, are you? Are you seeing like my chest? <laughs> that is not my intention be showing my chest. Hi, Dr. Kim. Let me make sure I'm showing the right thing because I feel like no face. We see your hands. Okay, so let me um, switch my camera. One second. I'll change my setup. Okay. Hi. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I apologize for the technical difficulties. Um, so let's get started. So I want to share my screen, but I have to make sure that yeah, it's going back to this. Yeah, that's not going to work. Um, I'm having all the challenges in the world. I am so sorry. Okay, so this is my first time using um, Ecamm Live in quite a while, and I want to share my screen with you guys. So I think, okay, here I am, so I can do it this way. So we are going to be doing a deep dive into AI over the next 12 weeks. So this is week one. So I am Meredith Hurston. 
I am a machine learning developer, an AI content creator, and um, I just, I enjoy using AI. I'm an AI enthusiast. So we're gonna go into some basics tonight. Um, I got a few questions this week that I want to answer. Um, but first, I just kind of want to give an introduction into AI, which stands for artificial intelligence. And the tools that I'm most familiar with are um, GPT, which is generative pre-trained transformers or like chatbots and also um, image creators like Midjourney and Playground AI. So that's what we're going to kind of talk about tonight. And thank you guys for bearing with me. I got off to a little uh, to a little challenge and start with my technology. <laughs> but so um, as I just explained a minute ago, the um, GPT is generative pre-trained transformers, which like is technical jargon for chatbots. And basically it's where a computer has been programmed to create human um, like text and it answers questions. You can dialogue with it. You can treat it like a personal assistant. Um, and the various tools that you can do that, one of the most popular ones is ChatGPT. Um, there's also Claude AI, um, Bing Chat, and Google Bard. I have um, used ChatGPT the most, and that's what I'm going to show you guys tonight. And Claude AI is another tool that I really, really like. Um, and I don't use it quite as much as ChatGPT, but it's, it's a definitely a second contender. I, I use it quite a bit, actually. So in terms of what I love about using chatbots and artificial intelligence, like we no longer are stuck. Like if we like need to write a letter, um, you need to come up with content. If you're a business owner, like if you need to create an email to like send to a business, say you had a bad experience with a company and you want to write them and complain, you can have chat GPT, you know, write the letter for you. You just pop it in Gmail and send it off, you know, to request um, a refund, to complain, to, you know, request better customer service or, you know, whatever it is that you need. So it definitely is an opportunity to stop being stuck because sometimes I feel like we neglect tasks. Um, because we're stuck. And so using having access to chat GPT will allow you not to be stuck. So that is one of the things that I love about it. Um, some of the trick, the tips and tricks that I have for using chat GPT, a lot of people are like, Oh my God, you know, it's AI is going to sound like a computer. It's not going to sound like me or you know, I might get caught for plagiarizing or, you know, it's borrowing other people's words. So that's not entirely true. And there are some ways that you can check for that. So um, one thing I always tell people when you're using ChatGPT, you want to train it on your style and your tone of speaking. So just recently, within the last couple of months, I think they have it now so you can put your own like custom preferences in there like you can tell it who you are like what type of style and tone um you want it to use when it's writing things for you you can say you know i'm a 40 year old black woman um you may or may not you know want to say that but you can say i'm a 40 year old you know woman i live in this area you know i use slang, slang when i talk or i'm you know professional and conversational you can give it um characteristics of you or you can actually give it a writing sample so that it understands who you are a little bit better so it will speak in your voice um the other thing that i love about chat gpt and other like ai it's not a person it's a machine so it never gets tired you can ask it to do you know 50 11 million things and it's not going to say, you know, hey, I'm tired. I don't want to do anymore. <laughs> if you are laying in the bed at two o'clock in the morning and you think about something, you can, you know, pop in this chat GPT and, you know, get whatever it is that you need it. So that's what I love um, about it. So I'm going to show you an example of that in just a little bit. Um, but although it doesn't get tired, you want to make sure that you um, ask it to do things in small doses because it can start to hallucinate if you ask it for too much at one time. So say you um, 
want to ask it to write a letter it can write you know a letter for you if it's just like a one page letter but if you want it to write like you know two or three pages or something like that you want to break that down into sections don't ask it for a bunch of words at a time because it'll start to hallucinate and maybe not make as much sense as it could if you asked it to you know do do it paragraph or section by section um, and the standard, so ChatGPT does have a free model, um, is version 3.5 and, um, you can do a lot with ChatGPT, just the regular out of the box version. If you are a business owner or you want to, um, have a little bit more robust features, I do recommend ChatGPT plus and that is $20 a month. And another thing about ChatGPT, um, you want to somewhat trust what you get out of it, but absolutely verify, especially if you need facts. You want to make sure that, um, you know, the information that you're getting, you want to do some fact checking, on, especially if it's writing a lot of stuff for you. If you're writing some sort of paper or research or pulling together something for a presentation, you want to make sure that you're, <laughs> you know, you're out here being credible. So the information it gives you, you definitely need to um, fact check it. So let's get into a chat GPT demo. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for just a second um, while I pull up chat GPT. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop those in the chat. And I'm going to go over some questions that I received on my Facebook post yesterday, too. So, okay, let me go back to screen share. All right. So if you have not used ChatGPT before, put a one in the comment. And if you've used it before, put a two down in the comments. Hey, Dr. Kim. Hey, Yolanda. And thank you, Dr. Kim. I'm glad you, <laughs> you guys can see me now. I don't know what was going on with my setup at first. It was showing the wrong, um, showing the wrong uh, camera. Okay, so we have, I see a one. So this is a chat GPT interface. So I use version 4.5, but I guess for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to use version 3.5 just so you guys can kind of see um, what, what you'll get like on the free version. So I pulled up, I was going to do a demonstration as a, um, just kind of like a general purpose of how you can use ChatGPT. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there's a bunch of different things that we can have ChatGPT do, ChatGPT do for us. Um, and let me bring that up. So things that ChatGPT can do for you. Um, we can use it to explain complex subjects. So you can ask it, you know, a question. It's a little bit, it's, it's similar to Google, but you can go in a lot, you can go a lot more in depth. Like if you don't understand, you know, what it's explaining to you, you can ask it to, um, you know, go into more detail and it will do that for you. Um, you can have it like write a cover letter. These are just some examples of things you can do. You can have it write a cover letter, help you update your resume. You can ask it to tackle like difficult math problems. Like if it's something that you don't understand and it can, you know, show you the, you can ask it to show you the work, but you still want to go like, now this is not for kids. This is for adults and parents. Like kids that are in school should not be using chat GPT to do their homework for them. But um, like if you're a parent and you need to assist your kid with homework, um, you can definitely ask it to, you know, show you how to do the work for difficult math problems. And then you'll want to go to your calculator and just kind of confirm that, um, you know, you're coming up with the right answers. Um, you can use it to write and debug and explain code. Like if you're interested in learning how to code, or if you are a coder and you, um, and you have some questions, something is not working out right in your code, you can definitely go to chat GPT and pop that in. Um, and it will help you kind of like go through your code and tell you what's wrong. 
you can use it um, for job interview preparation. Say if you're going for, um, I don't know, um, any type of job, you can ask it to um, kind of prep you, like go through interview questions that um, an interviewer would um, ask you for a specific type of job. You can ask it for advice. Um, you can ask it to help you with menu planning, time management. Um, if you're a busy person and you need to figure out how to get more done in your day, pop that in the chat GPT. Say, hey, you know, I have four hours, you know, in the evening. How can I best use my time to get, you know, these things done? And it may, it'll help you come up with a schedule and you can, you know, tell it to revise it, tweak it. It's very conversational. You, you use it like an assistant. And, you know, you can have it write poetry, give you jokes, help you write essays, and you can even have it help you write books. So I love, love, love chat GPT. What are some things you guys are interested in using chat GPT for? If you don't mind sharing in the comments. <clears throat> and this is a document that I pulled together for you guys that I'm going to give you a link that you can go grab at the end of this session. Um, it shows like, um, I know some people have some concerns about privacy and plagiarism and things like that. So we talk about, um, how you can check you, what you get out of chat GPT, um, to make sure that it's not being plagiarized or they actually have AI content detectors that you can run your content through just to make sure that it doesn't sound like super, like computery or like you know robotic like a robot ro wrote it um there's you can use things like quillbot to kind of rewrite and remix um the words where it has the same meaning but it's it's not um it's not plagiarized so those are some handy tools and i will give you guys a link to go get this in just a second so Dr. Kim says she wants to use ChatGPT to write books, and I have been using it for <laughs> for that person. We'll I'll have to um, compare some notes with you, Dr. Kim, on how we can do that. Um, I love using ChatGPT to write books. Like I started with um, having it write an outline, and then I went into the different sections of the book. And I'm not done with my book yet, but um, it's it's very helpful, and it's. It's written in like my style and tone. That's what I love about it because, as you know, you can um, you can give it your style. You can train it on your style and tone so that it'll it'll sound exactly like you. So before we go over into ChatGPT, I want to kind of talk about um, the anatomy of a prompt. A lot of people they're you know ready to try Chat ChatGPT or they've already tried it. And um, they may not have gotten like the result that they were looking for. They may have gotten frustrated and like, oh, this is, you know, a bunch of crap or a bunch of garbage. Um, and it could be possibly that uh, you're not using, you, that you're not prompting it in the right way. So let's go over the anatomy of a prompt really quick. So um, whenever I use ChatGPT, Chat I'll always give it a role to play. So I'll start out as like act as a, for example, fifth grade teacher. And then you can give it some additional context and, you know, you teach science and math. Um, please explain the phases of the moon and how it impacts the earth. Um, you can tell it that I want you to give me a couple of short paragraphs and then give me uh, 10 bullet points. And you can add some like examples if you have some examples of what you're looking for. Or you can say, um, you know, constraints, avoid using difficult to understand language because you want to make it as plain as possible. So let's go over into chat GPT and see what this um, what this will give us. So this is in version 3.5. So I'm going to say, excuse me. Wait, so are you guys able to see chat GPT right now or do you still see the Google Doc? I just want to make sure that you're seeing the right thing. I think I may need to or do you see both of my screens? You see, <laughs> that is so funny. I don't know why it's sharing both of the screens. Okay, let me share. I have two screens up. Well, I guess it's gonna share both. Okay, so, can you really see? I don't wanna share them both. I have to, um. 
do some work for next week because I don't know why I don't know why I showing both of the screens I only wanted to show one <laughs> anywho okay Ecam is giving me fits all right so I wish this was bigger so that you could see both but we're gonna roll with it so act as a fifth grade teacher who teaches science and math so um we wanted to please explain the phases of the moon please explain the phases of the moon and how it impacts the earth and then we want to say avoid using difficult to understand language so this should give us something super easy to understand so you just hit go or hit the green button it says of course hey there fifth graders <laughs> oh and I forgot to tell it the um that I wanted it to give me the uh short paragraph format in the 10 bullet points so I am going to come up here and edit and say please give me two short paragraphs and 10 bullet points. All right, so we're going to save and submit that. <clears throat> so it's going to rewrite for us. So it says, sure, happy to explain that. Um, phases of the moon. Together we're going to learn the moon and different shapes of the sky, which we call phases. So this would be really helpful for a teacher, a science teacher. Um, the moon doesn't shine on its own. It reflects light from the sun. As the moon moves around the earth, we see different parts of it lit up. So that's like really easy to understand. And then it goes into the impact of the earth. Um... Did you know the moon's phases can have impact on the planet? It can affect things like the tides in the ocean and how bright the night sky is. Here's how it works. So then it gives um, 10 bullet points about the various phases of the moon. So the new moon, um, the waxing and waning. And um, it says, remember, the moon is like our cosmic friend, changing its look to make nights interesting. So that's pretty cool. So that's an example of what you can do with chat GPT. So then you could go on to say, um, can, can you tell me a little more about how the moon interacts with the stars? And so it goes into talking about brightness and constellations and starry backgrounds. And, and it says that the moon is planet pals. So this is like, you know, good information for a child. Like if you're trying to explain, um, you know, the solar system. So this is how it can explain basic concepts. Um, and also, this is very good for, I don't know, I know some of the people that are on the um, session are business owners, and some people are not business owners, but you can literally go into ChatGPT and ask it anything. Um, if you look over here on the left-hand side of the screen where I'm scrolling, I have been using ChatGPT, I think, since January, <laughs> and I ask it, like, all sorts of stuff. Um, I have it help me with, hey, Sora Renee, I have some questions from you. We're going to get into those in just a few minutes. We're about a half hour in, 
but um and we're gonna go until about eight but i'm gonna get into some of the questions that you asked because you asked some really good questions yesterday but i have been using um chat gpt since january so i have done so many things in here like i've gotten together like you know lists of affirmations um packing lists you know for trips facebook captions um, I, I wrote a book on, um, like a journal with, um, a prompted journal for, um, like dealing with, um, disenfranchised grief, um, all sorts of stuff. I've written an article about cervical cancer awareness. Um, and I can share that with you. That was published, um, I think in January for cervical cancer awareness month. So I said, please write a, 16, a 600 word SEO optimized article about cervical cancer awareness month and the impact on black women. And it gave me a bunch of stuff. And I think at the time I, um, I was still kind of learning chat GPT and I had to go in and modify what I, you know, created on my own. Cause I really wasn't accustomed. As you can see, I didn't ask it to, um, or maybe I did do ask it to give me some additional information, but I didn't really, um, you know, ask it to revise it or put my own flavor and spin on it. I did that on my own, but that's something that I know very well now how to go back and continue prompting chat GPT to get different, um, get additional information from me. But I want to get into some of the questions that, um, that, my Sora Renee was asking me yesterday and let me pull those up because you have some really good questions Sora Renee um and a lot of it revolved around how chat GPT is trained and how artificial intelligence is trained and um if they are using like the data that we enter to continue training um their systems so I did find some information on um, on OpenAI that I want to share with you. So let me bring this up. So this is the OpenAI website. Let me close this and I wonder if that'll help. Okay, so now I'm sharing one screen. So, this is the OpenAI website where they talk about um, their privacy policies. So, bear in mind that Chat or OpenAI is the parent company of ChatGPT and they have several different products that are available on the market to um, pretty much all consumers at this point. So the product that we've heard the most about, um, I would say in mainstream media is chat GPT. So that's the chat bot that you can go in that I just was demonstrating and ask, you know, a bunch of questions, um, and you get responses back. So when you look at, um, chat GPT, it will tell you like on the front page, I think when you log in, let me see, does it say, it used to leave a note that kind of told you that um, this was a research product and that it gave some information about uh, it being a research product and that it could use your information to help train it. So let's go back to this data privacy. So with the chat GPT product, yes what you enter into chat gpt and what it responds back like they can look at that to see like if you are um, requesting inappropriate things i don't want to get into um any uh i guess what you call stop words or you know dangerous words that um wouldn't be appropriate for chat gpt because i don't want <laughs> to run into any issues with facebook either but um you can um 
they they look at the what you're inputting and what is being output to make sure that it's consistent that it makes sense that it's you know appropriate so they do train their models on what you are putting in there so you want to refrain from putting any proprietary information sensitive confidential you know information like for example i work in healthcare i have to be very careful that i'm not entering any type of like patient information any personal identifiable information um, when I'm using chat GPT at work, because sometimes I use it to ask questions, but I would never put any like protected health information or anything proprietary about my company into chat GPT. Um, but open AI also has what's called the API product and they have like on the back end of chat GPT. So I know one of them is platform.openai.com. So you can log in and this is like the back side of OpenAI where they have, um, here's the playground. I think this is pretty benign. I don't want to show <laughs> any of my information, but this is like the back end user um, interface for a uh, playground. And this is where you pay a little bit separately. So in order to get an API key with um, OpenAI, you have to have um, a credit card on file, like with billing. Um, their prices are very inexpensive. It depends on what you're doing. But on this side of OpenAI's platform, this data is held um, privately. Um, they talk about this on their data privacy um, section of their website. Um, they make a commitment that we do not train on any user data or metadata submitted through our APIs unless you explicitly opt in. So you can opt out of having um, OpenAI train their, their models on your information, but this is not through the public facing um, ChatGPT website. So I hope that answers your question, Renee, about um, about some of the data privacy concerns, because I, I do um, I do understand that concern, and I think a lot of people um, have that concern. And let me see, when you use one of your questions was when you use ChatGPT. I don't know what you mean. Um, explain what you mean by that, Renee. I'm not sure. Oh, very helpful. Okay, got you. <laughs> Got you, got you. I'm glad that was helpful. Um, so how does it get intelligent? So that is a whole conversation. I would say, um, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, but these models are, it's computer programming. It's like it's all science and numbers. Um, it's neural networks that it kind of goes a little bit beyond my comprehension, but it's neural networks that have been trained like this. So ChatGPT is based on transformers. So it's like a bunch of interconnectedness so that it understands um, human language, like the way that we speak, the way that we write, it understands that. And it's been trained on so much data, like public data from the internet, um, so that it knows how to put sentences together and be conversational. It understands the nuances um, in language. So that's how it was trained. It was trained on a whole bunch of information from the internet up until September of 2021 for ChatGPT. So there's another, um, another model out there or another company out there, Claude AI. Um, I'm not, I think theirs is a little bit more current because it will actually um, search the web for you. Um, when you ask, you know, questions, it'll give you like current web references if you ask it, if you ask it to do that. But ChatGPT, um, they disabled the uh, web browse feature temporarily. They're doing some tweaking to that and they are, um, they're planning to bring that back in the future. But there are some plugins that you can use to um, facilitate web search with um, ChatGPT. And so there are a few different plugins and we can get into that in just a second, but I want to see if there were any other questions that I wanted to address tonight. I know you asked about Siri and, um, and Alexa. I need to look into that a little bit more because I'm pretty sure those are proprietary technologies and I don't think they let us know 
how those are trained. So I'm not really sure. I have to do a little bit more research on that. But in terms of the way um, how chatbots get intelligent, it's because it was trained on all the publicly available information on the internet for the most part. Um, when you give the bot info in order to better tailor your results, how do you protect what you give? Um, there's no correct way. So if you feed it proprietary information about your business to get it to write email sequences for you, etc., your proprietary info is not out there and could be used to fine tune someone else's results. That's true. So that's one of the things that I taught on a few weeks ago. I had a paid um, training on how to use ChatGPT to create your email sequences. So that is when you use um, the public ChatGPT interface, um, they can use that information to help train and improve their model. I don't know that they're doing that, but as a part of their terms and conditions, it's permissible. And the only way to really opt out of that is to use the the API side of um, OpenAI, and you can do the same things um, on the playground side of OpenAI's website, but a lot of people don't really talk about that. It's not, I don't find that it's that complicated. Um, we probably can delve into that because I know that um, a lot of people do have some privacy concerns about their information, proprietary business information being used to train ChatGPT. So I think I'll probably dedicate one of these 12 sessions into going into the backside of Playground AI or Playground for OpenAI and um, train using their API to um, create your own um, like prompts and you know input your own information to to tailor your messages that you get out of there because that would be um, held more confidential and private. <clears throat> Another one question I got from um, Sor Andrea Hens Evans, she wanted to know about the best um, applications for AI art. So that's one of my favorite things to do as well. So there are a few that um, I recommend and I have a slide dedicated to that. And I'm so sad that it's not really <laughs> Share my screen the way I wanted to. Okay, here we are. So image generator tools. So Midjourney is my number one tool that I like to use to create images now. So Midjourney is available um, via Discord. Discord is like a, for lack of a better word, it's kind of like a chat room forum style um, application. It's available on the, the web as well as like they have a website and you can also use the mobile app to um, access Midjourney. Um, we're not going to get into that this week, but I am going to do a demonstration of Midjourney. And um, again, that's available through Discord. You can go to midjourney.com if you're interested in getting signed up for that. Um, they do require that you um, have a paid plan in order to use their tool now. They no longer offer a free um, trial, you can start as little as $10 a month. And then the next tool, oops, the next tool is Playground AI. Um, it's available at playgroundai.com. That's another tool that I like. I haven't, I don't think I've used Playground on my phone. It probably would be, I mean, you might be able to do it. I think it works okay on an iPad, but to me, it seems like it's, it's best suited for a desktop environment or like a laptop environment. And there's also Leonardo AI. I have not played around with Leonardo personally just yet, but um, that is available as an image generator tool. And in terms of mobile applications, um, Remini and Lenza are two mobile apps. And I know Lenza, Remini was out um, or got popular a little more recently with, I would say like the last two or three months. I personally have not used Remini, but I know a lot of people have used it and they enjoy it. Like it made the, um, and to do like professional headshots or like um, like personality photos that look you know really good. I think you have to upload several images of yourself and then it'll return um, you know a bunch of like professional like photography looking images. And then Lenza is similar where you upload a bunch of pictures and it'll give you different stylized like AI avatars and things like that. <clears throat> um. So I wanted to get into 
I'm going to hop into Mid Journey really quick and do a demonstration on um, on the end painting feature and then we can do um, I'll do a deeper dive into Mid Journey like how to get started with it um, in another session but I want to hop in and do the um, do just the end painting feature really quick to kind of show you guys how that works. It's, I had a lot of fun with <laughs> with end painting the other day. And while Discord is loading, oh, it's up, okay. So, I kind of want to show you guys what I did the other day. Let me share. Okay, so this is what I worked on the other day. Okay, I'll see you later, Rasora Renee. Thank you for tuning in. So this is what I worked on the other day. I created this image. This is a Afropunk style image and this is kind of a remix of an image that I had created a few months ago. So I spun up some new images and I chose um, the, the first one on the upper um, left hand side. Um, so this one and I went into once you um, bring up an image as an individual image. So for people that have not used Midjourney before when you put in a prompt so for this prompt, I use Afropunk style, gorgeous African-American woman, um, color futuristic, glow fly swirl, um, full body. That was the prompt that I used for it. So once you bring that, once you get your result back, it'll give you four images. Every time you run a new prompt in mid journey, it's going to give you four images. So I chose to work with this first image here. So if you, these use the, the top row, um, this is for upscale. So when you click e each of these buttons, it will give you a larger, um, higher resolution image. So I decided to work with image number one. Oh, and the V's down here stands for variations. So if you click one of these buttons, it will like spin the prompt again and it will give you, um, variations of that particular image. So this is this is one here, the upper left hand side, the upper right is image number two or position number two. Um, the lower left hand side is position number three and the lower right hand side is position number four. So that's what the one, two and three, one, two, three and four stand for. So working with image number one, I clicked on the very region and I'll show you how to do that in a second. And then I was able to get this. So this was me telling it that I wanted to change the outfit to a Star Trek outfit. So let's go back and do that again. So I'm going to bring up this image here and click on very region. And when you click on very region, oh, it still has my selections from the other day. Let me see if I can undo that. Okay. So starting fresh, you want to select like what area, whatever area that you want to like modify. So this is called in painting. So what we're going to do is basically select the area that we want to change and put a mask on it, which is referred to as in painting. So they give you the option to like do a square like this, which I don't want to do that because it might change some things in the background it might change some some of the background as opposed to just her shirt so i'm going to use this lasso tool to um to make the to select the the part of the shirt that i want to change so you just take your pointer and you start tracing around oops you start tracing around the object that you want to highlight just with your mouse and you want to do it kind of carefully as possible so that it'll um, 
that it'll only do her shirt. So I want to keep her earring. So I'm going to stop there. And then I'm going to pick this up again and go around the earring like that. And then I'm going to come up here and select this part of it, of her shirt. So hopefully now I have the whole shirt um, selected. So we're going to do, I'll do the Star Trek Enterprise uniform again and see what we get. So that was already there from the other day when I was working. So click the arrow. We'll scroll to the bottom and so it's running so we'll give this a minute to run so does anybody have any questions while this is running I'm glad you guys are hanging out with me tonight and I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna practice around on my um, on my setup to make sure that I'm good to go this coming week for the next time so I'm not having any issues and I'm also streaming on YouTube. And I'm not sure if we have any comments over there. So hopefully I'm not neglecting anyone on YouTube. So our render is done on Midjourney. And this is what we got with our in painting, or I think it's called varied region. I want to make sure that I'm using the terminology that they um, use here on mid journey it's called buried region so this is the outfit that they gave us i think this is super cute number one is cute and number four isn't bad either um number two is okay and i don't really care for image number three but um uh, one and four are super cute so i'm gonna upscale one and i'm gonna upscale four and just to show so that that rendered really fast so I'm going to show you guys how you can do variants too. So I'm going to get some variants of one, variations of one. So I'm going to click this V. Um, and I don't know what's going to happen. I haven't done any remixes with just a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, with just a, um, like an end painting image. So I'm curious to see what it does. And so also one of the newer features in mid journey is the zoom feature. So I'm going to zoom out on this one two times just to kind of see how it completes out her outfit and see what it does with the background. And sometimes I like, I like to guess what it's going to look like while it's rendering because it, it can take a while and it'll show you like the phases of, of what it's doing while it's rendering. So this one is done. What is going on with number one? This hair is terrible. <laughs> so <laughs> this is funny. They gave her terrible hair. Wow. So that's not gonna work. Her outfit, number four's outfit is cute and so is number two's, but that hair is, oh my goodness. And number two, space. Yikes. Not not what I not what I was hoping for. And so so those were the variations. Okay, so this was the variations of the one that we did. So it didn't do that good of a job <laughs> with those variations. It probably needed a, a more refined prompt. Um but looking at this zoom out, I'm trying to see if I like any of these. So I like how number four, she has her hand like on her hip. That's kind of cute and sassy. The background looks very um, like a galaxy or whatever. So it's cool. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to upscale number four just to see what it looks like in high res. Yeah, that's not bad. It's all right. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm counting her fingers. So she has too many fingers. So that's not going to work because there's no thumb. So that's one of the things that you have to be careful with, with um, artificial intelligence image creation. 
there's um <laughs> the hair looks like almost looks like a, a real star trek star back in the day it does that hair is kind of janky <laughs> but their hair on the show used to be kind of janky you're right dr kim so one of the things with mid journey is you have to really pay attention to your artwork that has hands because a lot of times it can be a dead giveaway and that's something i know that mid journey is working on to improve the um the hands and stuff but sometimes they can have strange hands like too many fingers like in her case she doesn't have a thumb so i wouldn't use this image as is um i would crop this image i would crop her hand out because otherwise it's, it's it's a pretty cool image and you might be able to use it for something but i would crop out her hand because i don't even think that i could fix that in photoshop i have a um, I have some basic Photoshop skills, but that's really beyond my skill set to try to fix this. Um, so I would probably, if I wanted, if I was really set on using this, I would spin that out again. But Sharika, that is how you can use the ink painting feature. You just, um, to go back to the image that we were working in, you just kind of, you can use the lasso tool or it depends on what you're trying to change in the image. I'm trying to scroll back to find... Where is she? Almost there. Here she is. Okay, so yeah, we selected her to do the very region. So that that's how you do it, is just use the lasso tool and select highlight the area that you want to change. Make sure that it has the little checkers. And then you type like whatever you want to see. So you want to do like a um a black cocktail dress you can see what we get for that but you can just continue to you know change out the clothes and I haven't played around with like changing out the hair or anything like that you might be able to change out the hair as well I know with mid journey um they seem to do a pretty decent job with giving um, black women, you know, appropriate looking hair. But I haven't tried to just change the hair on, on a model yet using this varied region feature. So this came out better the other day when I said to put on a black cocktail dress. These are okay. None of them are really wowing me. And image number three is kind of jacked up. It's got her arm is doing something weird. So none of those are wowing me, but you have to play with it. And that's with any pretty much AI tool. You have to um, keep spinning it and playing with it to, to get what you're looking for because it doesn't always um, give you what you want on the first go. So that is playing around with a couple of tools. Um, my favorite tools, Mid Journey and ChatGPT today. And I want to give you guys an opportunity to get the um to get the um the guide that I have, the, the AI toolkit. So I'm gonna drop that. Let me see, it says that I'm dropping it in. So that went to YouTube. So I wonder how. It's not letting me comment on Facebook. So I'm going to have to drop it in Facebook from my phone. But let me see. I should be able to do it this way. If I bring up Facebook on my computer, hopefully it's not going to have me playing in the background. So I muted it. So I'm going to drop um, the link to where you can go grab the, um, the toolkit. For um for our 12 week deep dive into AI. So do you guys have any questions about any of the um of the tools that we went over? Let me go back to how um how you can work with um prompts. Or like the anatomy of a prompt because that's that's really important when you're um 
when you're working in ChatGPT. <laughs> Share my screen. Okay, so going back to the anatomy of a prompt, anytime you, um, just to reiterate, when you start, when you go into chat GPT to get some information and you wanted to complete a task or whatever it is that you want to do, you want to tell it to act as a, like say when I um, have it do emails for me, I'll say act as a, um, a world renowned copywriter that has a deep understanding of human psychology. And then um, I'll tell it, you know, that I'm a business owner and what type of business I have. I'll, you know, explain what type of product or service that I'm offering. And then in terms of what I need ChatGPT to do for me is to create um, an email that introduces a new product or service. And then I'll tell it, um, you know, I want it to be the first email in a series of five or something like that. And under examples, you can give it like an example of a recent email that you had that was like successful, had a good open rate or whatever, um, as an example. And you can give it, you can like define constraints. You could like say, you know, I don't want you to use the word like unleashed or unveil. So one of the things, um, this is just a personal observation I've noticed about chat GPT when you don't give it like its style, your tone or style to use, it'll use words like um, unleash or unveil or whatever. And to me, those are now like indicators that something was AI written, <laughs> which I think is funny. Um, and I don't know if that's like something that the content detectors pick up on, but I feel like um, unleash and unveil are two, um, two of ChatGPT's favorite words. <laughs> Dr. Kim said, yes, please don't use un Unleashed. It's a dead giveaway that is AI. And I concur with you 100%, Dr. Kim. I feel like, you know, a few months ago, we were all kind of learning, you know, chat GPT. And like, even I was using like Unleashed and, you know, Unveil. And I saw everybody else using it. I'm like, oh, Lord. So now I kind of know like that that's, it's a dead giveaway <laughs> that something is, you know, AI generated. So you can, um, <laughs> I'm guilty too. <laughs> I am guilty too, for sure. So, um, yeah, that's, that's how you can tell that, um, things are AI generated, but you can go into, um, there are some tools that you can go into like, um, content scale.ai, which is an AI content detector. And it can tell you whether or not, you know, what you're planning to, you know, send as an email or using a product or an essay or article, whether or not it comes across as AI generated content. And um, if it does, you can like run it through a service like Quillbot to have it rewrite. So Quillbot not only, Quillbot has a few different features. Not only is it a plagiarism checker, it also will rewrite your um, your content for you or write your, rewrite your letter or whatever, whatever, you know, thing that you have that came from ChatGPT, it will rewrite it for you. Um, and a couple of other things that are in this um, resource guide, and I'm going to be adding to this resource guide too. So you guys will get a link that you can come back to and refer to um, after this initial release. As I get um, as I get a chance, I'm going to add some additional resources to this. But I want to get this sent out to people that are interested in prompts because I've had people reaching out to me about you know how you know to prompt uh, ChatGPT and other chatbot tools. So one other or two other resources I want to share um, as we're wrapping up, because I think we're, oh yeah, we're a little bit over time um, and I want to be respectful of you guys' this time. Um, two other resources I want to share. Um, one is PromptBase. So PromptBase is a website that you can go to and you can um, purchase prompts. So um, I think I will probably do, um, do a kind of quick show and tell of that for next week. Um, but prompt base, you can go there and, and buy prompts that will help you do, um, that will help you in chat GPT as well as in mid journey. If you're interested in doing some image creation and the other one that I recommend is, excuse me, AI PRM, which is, um, it goes along with chat GPT. Do I have AI PRM turned on? I don't think I do. Let me see. Let me turn it on right quick. So 
AIPRM is a home extension that, um, no, I wasn't turned on. So I'm going to turn off my folders for a second and go back to ChatGPT. So AIPRM is a Google Chrome extension that will help you with prompts in ChatGPT. So they have a free version and they also have a paid version. So you can see the interface um, changed right there um, when I refresh the page. So cancel. Okay. So here are like the public um, AIPRM like prompt assistants, I think is what you would call it. So um, they have like human written content. Like if you're trying to write an article that's SEO optimized. And if you guys want to know what SEO is like um, when you guys like I'm going to create a new event for next week. So kind of ask me your questions. Let me know the um, the way that you would like to use ChatGPT. And I can tailor the conversation more towards that because I wasn't sure if it was going to be like a mix of business owners or people just looking for general purposes that are you know new to AI and want to understand how to use it in their everyday life or what your perspective is. So kind of drop um, for the event next week. Let me know like your perspective and I and thank you for the hearts and likes. I appreciate that. I'm glad that you guys are here and, and getting something out of this. This is this is fun. This is fun for me. I could talk about AI all day and I'm not going to be on here all night doing that tonight. But I'm excited that you guys are here and I look forward um, to chatting with you guys next week. But um, back to AIPRM. So this can help you like with a bunch of different stuff. Um, it's probably more so geared towards business owners like helping you like how to attract like new business or to gain customers, to create content for your customers so that you can be seen in the marketplace. But they have all sorts of, you know, tools like YouTube script writers, um, how to write articles, like how to create a buyer persona. Um, what else do they have in here? Um, code generator. So if you work in a tech space or even if you aren't in a tech space and you are a lay person and you want to, you have an idea for an app, you can use ChatGPT to help you develop the code for that. Or if you have a YouTube channel or, you know, you want to be more active on social media, you can use some of these, um, these prompt generators to create, um, you know, social media posts and all of that stuff. So this is um, an intro to ChatGPT, an intro to AI. Please... Again, give me your questions and I will tailor the conversation to, to help you guys get what you need. I'm looking forward to spending uh, the next, I guess, 11 weeks after this with you guys. And I thank you for joining me tonight. And if you want to grab a copy of um, the toolkit that I put together, there is a link in the chat or you can um, email me independently and I will... Um, or not email me, but send me a direct message and I will give you the link so that you can get the toolkit. And otherwise, you guys have a good night and I will see you next Thursday. Bye, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Dr. Kim. I appreciate you.